the unseen enemy. There have been a constant fright of death in humans. You never know how, where, and when you would die. Over the history of mankind, there are several viral outbreaks, epidemics, and pandemics which struck mankind. It's a constant knock at the door of your life. A virus can be as light as flu or as deadly as corona. Today, I and Bisma would be discussing the history of all the viruses that have caused the number of deaths and how they were treated by the people of respective times. The Plague of Athens. In the darkest corner of ancient Greece, outbreak occurred during Peloponnesian War, which happened between two cities, Sparta and Athens. After continuous defeats, Athens, in order to protect them, concentrated themselves in built walls. The population became crowded into confined quarters. It has become the perfect breeding ground for a terrifying disease no one knows how to cure. Almost two thirds of population died. The plague began one year after the war started. Death toll was estimated up to 75,000 to one lakh. The outbreak spread from Greece towards Libya, Egypt, and Ethiopia. It began with violent sensations of heat in head and redness and burning in the eyes. The throats and tongues were turned blood red. Symptoms developed into sneezing, hoarseness, violent coughing and convulsions. Internal heat was so intense that victims could not endure even lightest clothing and plunge into cold water. If they survived, the plague would descend to bowels where severe lions would form together with diarrhea. The malady which first settled in head passed through whole body. And if patients even survive these worst effects, symptoms appear in the form of seizures of extremities and many survived with loss of eyes or immediate loss of memory. Based on clinical symptoms, two diagnoses have dominated the modern literature on Athenian plague. It could be smallpox or typhus. The tradition is vague about therapeutic measures. Death was a gift for those suffering the sickness, and it would have been cruel to pray to God to allow them to live. Antony Plague also referred as Plague of Galen, erupted in 165 CE. The spread of epidemic was favored by the occurrence of two military episodes in Parthenian War and wars in Northeastern Italy. Victims who were known to endure fever, chills, stomach pain, uh, thirstness, swollen throats, diarrhea, which turned from red to black over the course of week. They also developed horrible black pox on their body, both inside and out. Most likely smallpox or measles, estimated deaths were 2,000 per day. A quarter to third of entire population perished, estimated at 60 to 70 million throughout empire. Pain was seldom worse than the anticipation of it. Victims suffered in this way for two or even three weeks before illness finally abated. Perhaps 10% of 75 million people never recovered. There was no chance that it could be cured. It could barely even be treated. People were dying faster than they could be buried. Smallpox. It is considered as one of the most serious bioterrorist ter threats. Smallpox is contagious, meaning it spreads from person to another. Acute, often deadly virus that has affected humans for thousands of years. At that time, there was no known cure. The origin of smallpox was unknown. The findings of smallpox like rashes on Egyptian mummies suggested that it existed for at least 3,000 years. The earliest written descriptions of a disease like smallpox appeared in China in 4th century, in India in 7th century, and in Asia in 10th century. The spread can be seen as with increased rate of trade between China and Korea, the smallpox spreads to Ch Japan. 
and in seventh century with increased arab expansion smallpox was spread into northern africa spain and portugal in 11th century crusades further spread it in europe in 15th century portugal occupies a part of western africa bringing smallpox european settlers and african slave trade import smallpox into caribbean and central south america in 16th century then they bring smallpox to north america in 17th century and in 18th century explorers from great britain bring smallpox to australia so in short from china smallpox spread it towards australia till 18th century early control effects smallpox was a terrible disease on average 3 out of every 10 people who got it died people who survived usually had scars which were sometimes severe one of the first methods for controlling smallpox was variolation a process named after smallpox virus that is variola virus during variolation people who never had smallpox were exposed to material from smallpox sores by scratching the material into their arm or inhaling it through the nose after variolation people usually develop the symptoms associated with smallpox such as fever and a rash however few people died than if they had acquired smallpox naturally the basis for vaccination began in 1796 when english doctor edward jenner noticed that milkmaids who had given cowpox were protected from smallpox he also knew about variolation and guessed that exposure to cowpox could be used to protect against smallpox vaccination became widely accepted and gradually replaced the practice of variolation at some point in 1800s virus used to make smallpox vaccine changed from cowpox to vaccinia virus the virus is transmitted through face to face by air or by crossing placenta following lab test could be used for diagnosis they include pcr rflp elisa immunohistochemistry hanta virus i hope we never lose sight of one fact that this was all started by a mouse hanta virus is a lipid enveloped tri segmented negative sense rna virus which belong to family buniviridae it was named from prototype virus hanten which was first isolated from mouse apotamus caught near hanten river in south korea korea 1976 The virus is transmitted through inhalation of aerosols generated by rodent saliva, urine, and feces. There were two major outbreaks: one from 1950 to 53, which is associated with spectrum of diseases referred to as hemorrhagic fever with renal syndrome (HFRS). Secondly, was the 1993 Hanta virus pulmonary syndrome. In May 1993, an outbreak occurred in an area. An outbreak of unexplained pulmonary illness occurred in an area known as the Four Corners. A young, physically uh, fit man suffering from shortness of breath was rushed to a hospital in New Mexico and died very rapidly. Later diagnosed as Hanta virus pulmonary syndrome. Their illness was characterized most prominently by symptoms which range from headache, dizziness, chills, fever, myalgia (meaning muscle pain). and gastrointestinal symptoms such as nausea vomiting abdominal pains diarrhea followed by sudden onset of respiratory distress and hypotension lung congestion followed by fluid accumulation in lungs and shortness of breath also occurred this is zoonotic viral respiratory disease zoonotic meaning it spreads from animals toward human spread mainly by rodents it's also known as nombre virus due to small number of hps cases the incubation time is not positively known however on the basis of limited information it appears that symptoms develop between 1 and 8 weeks after exposure to fresh urine droppings or saliva of infected rodents there is no specific treatment cure or vaccine however if infected individuals receive medical care early they may do better In intensive care patients are intubated and given oxygen therapy to help them through severe respiratory disorders disease can be fatal it has a mortality rate of 
influenza, Spanish flu. During summer of 1918, troops began to return home on leave, unknowingly carrying a deadly weapon that will wipe out 50% of world's population. The virus spreads across cities, towns, and villages in soldiers' home countries. That was the most deadliest pandemic in history, caused by an influenza type A, subtype H1N1 virus. In 1918, a new influenza virus emerged, infecting 500 million people, one third of world population, causing a flu pandemic. The 1918 flu pandemic produced greatest influenza death toll in recorded history, killing at least 50 million people worldwide. More US soldiers died from 1918 pandemic than were killed in battle during World War I in 1918. Mortality was high in people younger than five years old, 20 to 40 years old, and 65 years and older. The pandemic occurred in three waves. Although it remains uncertain from where the virus first emerged, it quickly spread through Western Europe by July. It had spread to Poland. The first wave was comparatively mild. In the two later waves, about half the deaths were among 20 to 40 years old, an unusual mortality age pattern for influenza. A pandemic has devastated the planet, sorted humanity into two types, the infected and uninfected, the living and the living dead. How exactly did a flu virus cause such a massive death across the world? And why is it called Spanish flu? What do we know? What do we know for sure is that Spanish flu didn't start in Spain. So then why is it called? Well, the flu broke out during the World War I. Neither the Allied nor Central Powers wanted to admit to additional loss of life. So they reported, so they limited the reports of outbreak. In the US, some people were even afraid that reporting the flu might violate the Sedition Act of 1918, which prohibited the people using this loyal language against government during war. But Spain wasn't in World War I. And since they had no reason to hide anything, they reported their flu-related deaths. So with a spotlight on Spain, US and European news outlets nicknamed it Spanish flu. But the flu was spreading well outside of Spain and with large scale of infections going unreported, no one was prepared of deadly pandemic it would become. Symptoms. Initial symptoms included sore head and tiredness, followed by a dry hacking cough, a loss of appetite, stomach problems, and then on the second day, excessive sweating. Next, the illness could affect respiratory organs and pneumonia could develop. There was a shortage of medical personnel because many doctors and nurses were serving in World War I. There were no flu vaccines, antiviral drugs, antibiotics, or mechanical ventilators. Treatment tools were basic, and limited to supportive care and unproven remedies. Aspirin or acetyl salicyclic acid were a common remedy. Doses of epinephrine were given for secondary pneumonia. Some used salicycline, salt of quinine was also suggested. Warm baths were used. The quick spread of virus and limited ways to prevent and treat flu created a major public health crisis. A doctor in 1918 at a camp said, remarked, it is only a matter of few hours then until death comes. And it is simply a struggle for air until they suffocate. It's a horrible death. Asian flu. In February, 1957, a new influenza A H2N2 virus emerged in East Asia, triggering a pandemic. Outbreak was first identified in Singapore, then Hong Kong, United States, and subsequently spread to countries worldwide. It was the second major influenza pandemic to occur in 20th century, followed with the pandemic of 1918. Death toll was estimated to 1.1 million worldwide. Virus was comp comprised of three different genes of influenza A subtype. Researchers have indicated that this virus was a reassortant strain origin from strain of avian influenza and human influenza virus. Symptoms range from verbal legs and a chill followed by prostration, sore throat, runny nose, 
coughs, achy limbs, head, and a high fever following. A vaccine for H2N2 was introduced in 1957 and the pandemic slowed down. Hong Kong flu. 11 years after the Asian influenza epidemic, a new virus variant was isolated in the summer of 1968 in Hong Kong. The origin of this virus is not known. There is no official information from the health authorities, but prior to outbreak in Hong Kong, travelers reported an increased incidence of influenza-like infections in neighboring Chinese province. The 1968 pandemic was initiated by the emergence of a virus known as influenza A subtype H3N2. It is suspected that this virus evolved from strain of influenza that caused 1957 pandemic. Death toll was estimated from 1 million to 4 million deaths, far fewer than the 1918 pandemic, which caused between 25 million and 50 million deaths. It was a third influenza pandemic, highly contagious, meaning spreading from person to person. Infection caused chills, fever, muscle pain, and weakness. These symptoms usually persisted between four to six days. The highest level of mortality were associated with most susceptible groups, namely infants and elderly. A vaccine was developed against virus. It became available only after the pandemic had peaked in many countries. The rapid development of vaccine and the availability of antibiotics to treat secondary infections limited the spread and mortality of pandemic. Case fatality ratio below 0.5% make it a category 2 disease on the pandemic's severity index. Russian flu, influenza associated mortality of England and Wales. On December 28, newspaper reported the first death in US 25 year old Thomas Smith of Canton. He was said to have ventured out too soon after his illness, got a fresh call, and died of pneumonia. As the death toll rose, Americans began to take the threat more seriously. The New York Tribune rep reported, persons with weak lungs and those suffering from heart diseases or kidney troubles are most seriously affected. And in many cases, the influenza led quickly to pneumonia. Symptoms range from chills, especially in black, sorry, back, thumping, muscular pain, runny nose, eyes, sneezing, coughing, prostration, loss of appetite, loss of sense of smell, photophobia, headache, Treatment include acetaminophen or naproxen. Swine flu. Swine flu made headlines in 2009 when it was first discovered in humans and became a pandemic. In the spring of 2009, scientists recognized a particular strain of flu virus known as H1N1. The virus is a combination of viruses from pigs, birds, and humans that cause diseases in humans. It was designated as influenza A, H1N1 PDM09 virus. Because so many people around the world got sick, in 2009, the World Health Organization declared it to be a pandemic. It was highly contagious, spread it through sneezing, coughing, and touching. Symptoms range from chills, fever, coughing, sore throat, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, and they persisted till seven days. Diagnosis is done by sampling blood from, from body, either taken from nose or throat. Two antiviral drugs are recommended, Tamiflu and Relenza. A monovalent vaccine was produced. Most cases can be fatal, especially those with underlying health conditions. Measles. Measles is highly infectious a highly contagious virus. It's really infectious. One person can infect up to 18 other people and the virus floats in the air for up to two, maybe four hours where an infected person has been. What's worse, a person is infectious three to five days before the onset of typical measles rash and one to two days before the onset of fever. This means that a perfectly healthy looking person can go around spreading measles and not even know they are sick. Virus remains infectious in air or surface for up to two hours, caused by infection from a virus from paramyxovirus family. It can be spread through air from respiratory droplets and small aerosol particles. 
transmitted through cough and sneeze. Measles is diagnosed by skin rash and characteristic symptoms. Symptoms appear within 10 to 12 days and include cough, fever, runny nose, red eyes, sore throat, white spots inside mouth. There is no specific treatment. There are some interventions which include a measles vaccine given within 72 hours of exposure and doses of immune proteins taken within six, six days. Malaria, a highly infectious, deadly virus from African rainforest that suddenly appears in Europe and rest of the world. There is no cure. Malaria is a life-threatening disease caused by parasites that are transmitted to people through bites of infected female Anopheles mosquito. It is caused by plasmodium parasites and are spread to people through the bite of infected female Anopheles mosquito called malaria vectors. Malaria is an acute febrile illness. Four kinds of malarial parasites infect humans, Plasmodium falciparum, Vivex, Ovel, and malaria. P. Plasmodium nolesi, a type of malaria that naturally infects macules in Southeast East Asia, also infect humans, causing a zoonotic malaria, means that is transmitted from animals to humans. It can be transmitted to blood transfusion, organ transplant, shared use of needles and syringes, and can be transmitted before and during delivery, that is congenital malaria. In the non-immune individual, symptoms usually appear 10 to 15 days after the effective mosquito bite. The first symptoms, fever and flu-like illness, shaking chills, headache, may be mild and difficult to recognize as malaria. If not treated within 24 hours, the plasmodium falciparum malaria can progress to severe illness, leading to muscle aches, tiredness, nausea, vomiting, anemia, jaundice, seizure, coma, and ultimately death. Anti-malarial drugs include atovacuone proguanil, quinine sulfate with doxycycline, primaquine phosphate. Yellow fever virus, flavivirus. Over the course of history, yellow fever has paralyzed governments, halted commerce, and colitized cities. It is an RNA virus that belongs to genus flavivirus, and it is, it is a potentially dead flu-like virus, a hemorrhagic disease. Yellow fever is transmitted to people primarily through the bite of infected Aedes or Hemagus species mosquito. It is the same mosquito that transmits dengue fever. Yellow fever is diagnosed based on laboratory testing, a person's symptoms, travel history, diagnosis of blood samples containing virus and antibodies. 50% of people with severe symptoms die. There is no medicine to treat or cure infection. To prevent getting sick from yellow fever, use insect repellents, long sleeved shirts, long pants, and get vaccinated. Vaccination is the only way to prevent it. 17D vaccine is among the most effective. Illness ranges from fever with aches, uh, chills, headaches, loss of appetite, decreased urination, abdominal pain, vomiting, seizures, and delirium. The death rate for Nipah virus is up to 75% and it has no vaccine. While the world focuses on COVID-19, Scientists are working hard to ensure it doesn't cause the next pandemic, another sinister virus, Nipah virus. It's an RNA virus of family Paramyxoviridae caused by genus Henipa virus and is closely related to Hendra virus. Nipah virus was first recognized in 1999 during an outbreak among pig farmers in Malaysia. It was also reported in Bangladesh. The disease has also been identified periodically in Eastern India. Case fatality rate is between 40% and 75%. Incubation period is 5 to 14 days, but could persist up to 45 days in extreme cases. It, it's a zoonotic virus. It is transmitted from animals to human and can also be transmitted to contaminated food or directly between people. Fruit bats, also known as flying foxes of genus Pteropus, their natural reservoir host of Nipah virus, a zoonotic disease. Symptoms 
range from acute respiratory infections and encephalitis that can lead to coma or death. Fever, headaches, myalgia, mean muscle pain, vomiting, sore throat, seizures. There are no existing vaccines or treatment, but phase one vaccine started in February 2020 and is expected to be completed in September 2001. Diagnosis can be done through several tests, including RT-PCR, PCR, virus isolation by cell culture. Although Nipah virus has caused only a few known outbreaks in Asia, it infects a wide range of animals and causes severe diseases and death in people, making it a public health concern. Okay, thank you, Samara, for your part. Now, Bisma here. The next disease that we will discuss is dengue. Dengue is also a viral disease and it is known as mosquito-borne viral infection. The virus which is, which is responsible for causing dengue is dengue virus, also known as DENV. It is a mosquito-borne viral infection because the dengue virus is present inside the mosquito. It has four serotypes, one, two, three, and four. And the two and three are known to be the common reasons of outbreaks of dengue. The dengue virus is transmitted to the host by the, by the bite of the infected female mosquito Aedes aegypti. Once it enters in your body, it can either cause you acute flu illness or maybe severe dengue, depending upon the compatibility between the virus and the host. EIP, EIP is extrinsic incubation period. I am defining uh, this term here because I'll use it more often in my presentation and you all must know this. Incubation period is the period between the time when the mosquito takes a viramic blood meal and the time when the mosquito becomes infectious. So the period is known as extrinsic incubation period and that period for the dengue virus is eight to 12 days. After the outbreak of coronavirus, the researchers have said that the combined impact of COVID-19 and dengue epidemics can potentially result in devastating consequences on the population at risk. Symptoms and treatment. So in the normal dengue, we have severe headache, pain behind the eyes, muscle and joint pains, nausea, vomiting, swollen glands and rash. But if it gets worsen and a person develops severe dengue, so they would might have a symptom of severe abdominal pain, persistent vomiting, rapid breathing, bleeding gums, fatigue, restlessness, and blood and vomit. If we talk about the treatment of dengue virus, so there is no as a specific treatment for that. A person who is contracted to the dengue virus must take rest and he should also increase the amount of uh, the intake of fluid. It would also help them in treating that. And the other thing that they can do is they can take acetaminophen. Acetaminophen is known as Panadol in our country. And you know, the people use Panadol in the case of dengue. So says to proper medical care lowers fertility rate is below 1% and the infection to the people, number of people cause every, every, every year is 100 to 400 million people. The next disease is cholera that has been prominent in the 19th century. And there was a lethal outbreak of uh, cholera in the India in 1817. After the studies, it, it was seen that the virus which is causing the cholera in the people is Vibrio cholera. Vibrio cholera is present in the contaminated food and drink. So it transmitted to the fecal or oral route to the host. There have been numerous outbreaks and seven global, global pandemics of the cholera outbreak. Still, it causes, it infects 1.3 to 4 million people every year and it kills 21,000 to 143,000 people every year. The Vibrio cholera has hundreds of zero groups, means it has more than 100 zero groups, but the two strains that are known to cause outbreaks and pandemics are O1 and O139. So the people who get contracted to the cholera, uh, Vibrio cholera, the 80% of them do not develop any symptoms, mean they are asymptomatic. Only the 20% of the people get severe symptoms like diarrhea, vomiting, and leg cramps. You can easily treat them at home. You just have to take 
more and more fluid in your diet by orally or intravenously. You must keep your body hydrated and you can also conjugate uh, with antibiotics in order to relieve from other pains like headache, etc. The next disease, the viral disease, is encephalitis lethargica, which is basically a viral infection of mind. It was first described in 1917, and there was an epidemic of this disease in Europe in 1916 to 1930. The virus which is causing encephalitis lethargica is still unknown. It causes a person sleeping sickness because it affects your mind and it makes person to go into a coma state. At that time, it infected 1 million people in the Europe, out of which 50,000 people were died due to the respiratory failure caused by the neurological dysfunction. There is a part of our brain known as substantia nigeria. It affects that part of our brain and it distinct from the stasty fly transmitted sleeping sickness. It is still unexplained that how this virus is causing the sleeping sickness in the um, person. But the researchers believed that the reason the virus which is responsible for encephalitis lethargica is influenza virus. It is so because when there was the outbreak of encephalitis lethargica in Europe, at the same time, there was also the outbreak of influenza virus in the world. The, so the researchers considered that infectious cause to be a possibility of encephalitis lethargica, and they considered influenza virus that. Symptoms and treatment. In the, in the encephalitis lethargica, you have high fever, sore throat, headache, lethargy, double vision, delayed physical and mental responses that is, as it is a infection of mind. So there are delayed physical and mental responses, sleep inversion and catatonia. But in severe cases, it can also develop akinetic mutism in a patient. Akinetic mutism is a coma-like state. So you know that there is also a disease known as Parkinson disease, which is also a disease of um, mind or brain. So similarly, the liver dopa and anti-Parkinson uh, drugs can be used to treat this um, viral infection too. But the modern approaches are also working on the immunomodulating therapies to make it better. Next disease is poliomyelitis. Poliomyelitis is, has been epidemic which were unknown before the 20th century. The virus which is causing the poliomyelitis in a person is a poliovirus and it belongs to the genus enterovirus. Poliovirus is highly contagious and it also attacks your nervous, nervous system. As it attacks your nervous system, so it can also make your body paralyzed and can eventually cause death. It is transmitted through the fecal oral route into the person. And the other causes of the transmissions can, occur, can be contaminated feces, nasal and oral secretions. Usually it is one to 2% in children and 10 to 12% in adults. But luckily, 95% people who contracted to the polio virus are asymptomatic. They don't develop any kind of symptom. But in the rest 5% people, it is divided into three different types on the basis of the symptoms. Abortive polio, non-paralytic polio, and paralytic polio. Abortive polio. Abortive polio is a mild polio in which you have fever, fatigue, and headache. But in the non paralytic polio, you also have additional neurological symptoms like sensitivity to light and neck stiffness. But in the paralytic pol polio, your body is totally paralyzed and it begins with the loss of superficial reflexes and muscle spasms. Once you get polyvirus, then there is no turning back, there is no cure of this virus. So it is better recommended to get vaccinated for it. There is inactivated polio vaccine that is given at the different ages of, uh, of time, like one shot is given at the age of um, two months, then the next is given at the age of four months, and then twice more before entering into the elementary school. So you better get vaccinated right after the birth for the polio. Now the next disease is HIV AIDS. HIV AIDS is known as sexually transmitted disease, we all know. It was first noticed in the 1981 and it is still present. And it is mostly in the countries where the homosexual are more. 
when the first it was noticed there that was a homosexual man there was a kaposi sarcoma and pneumocytosis pneumonia in that man the uh, this sarcoma is basically associated with the herpes virus exactly that virus which is also responsible for causing it and the pneumonia uh, pneumocystosis pneumocystis pneumonia is also a disease which was once was the major cause of death for the people with hiv but it is now easily treatable if it 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 should be it should start treating as it diagnosed the number of people infected who don't know about it are 15% and the number of people who are virally suppressed are 50% in this case from the 1981 to 2021 there are more than 70000 people who have died died it causes aids the hiv virus causes aids which is sexually transmitted disease and it is also it is common in the gays and bisexual men in this you have fever fatigue headache sore throat swollen limb glands short term nausea rash muscular aches and pain and also very weak immune system now for the treatment of the aids from the uh, and uh, from the prevention of hiv human immunodeficiency vi uh, deficient virus we have art art is anti retroviral therapy as there is no cure for hiv but you can control it by giving proper medication for hiv the medicines that are designed for controlling the hiv can help in reducing the morbidity and mortality rate some people get recover within the 6 months but remember these medic medication only help in controlling the hiv but it doesn't prevent the transmission of hiv from one person to another and for the treatment it is better that it should be started as soon as it diagnosed now the next disease which has been common in the united states in 1996 was meningitis meningitis is is a state in which there is an inflammation of the fluid and the membrane meninges which are surrounding your brain and spinal cord the number of cases that were reported at that time only 5 to 10% patients died the viruses which were causing the meningitis in the us were enterovirus herpes simplex virus mumps virus and west nile virus there is headache fever stiff neck seizures confusion no appetite and sensitivity to light some people improved without treatment and for some it is life threatening there is a vaccine which has been designed for the prevention of uh, meningitis is hib vaccine hemophilus influenza type b vaccine which should be given to the children about the age of 2 months and it is also recommended to some adults with sickle cell diseases and aids now the next is sars sars is severe acute respiratory respiratory syndrome it's a respiratory illness which is caused due to the sars cov sars coronavirus SARS coronavirus is responsible for causing SARS which is potentially fatal infectious viral disease. Its outbreak has been in the 2002 to 2004 in Asia and in 2003 it was recognized as global threat. This virus is same as coronavirus COVID-19. It also spread due to the close contact cough and sneeze and the incubation period of the SARS cov is 2 to 7 days. its symptoms are also exactly like the covid-19 fever headache feeling of discomfort body aches chills sore throat cough pneumonia difficulty in breathing shortness of breath hypoxia and diarrhea but there are some antiviral drugs for sars cov that can be used to treat that and apart from that you can also take some supportive therapy like oxygen and fluids as there is a difficulty in breathing so you can take oxygen artificially otherwise you can also take some antibiotics to treat secondary infections like the discomforts aches throats etc next is ebola virus 
Ebola virus is common in causing the hemorrhagic fever. It was first discovered in 1976 near Ebola River, which is present in the state of Congo. The outbreak of it was in African countries, but the scientists still don't know where it comes from. There is no specified uh, virus specified for causing the Ebola in the Ebola disease in the people. But it affects human and non-human primates. Non-human primates are monkeys, chimpanzees, and gorillas. It is transmitted through the contact with the blood, body fluids, and tissues of animals. You have fever, weakness, fatigue, sore throat, gastrointestinal symptoms, unexplained hemorrhaging, bleeding, or bruising. In this case, but now there are two drugs that have been approved by the CDC and for the treatment for treating Ebola. The first was just approved recently in the October twenty twenty, named as Inmazep, and the second is approved right after the two months in December twenty twenty, known as Ibanga. So they both are the combination of monoclonal antibodies. Monoclonal antibodies are are laboratory-made proteins that mimic the immune system ability to fight virus, resulting in genetic variation. These monoclonal antibodies bind to the proteins of the virus, known as glycoproteins, and prevent virus from entering into the body. Now the next is MERS, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. Middle Respiratory Syndrome is exactly like the SARS. It is also a respiratory illness, and it is also caused due to the MERS MERS COV coronavirus. Coronavirus uh, that causes MERS is a zoonotic virus. Zoonotic virus are those viruses which are first. Present in the animals, then they transmit from animals to the human, then humans to humans. So the viruses that are coming from the animals to the humans are known as zoonotic virus. First, it was reported in the Saudi Arabia in twenty twelve in twenty twelve, and then it spreaded to United States, and there was a largest outbreak in Saudi Arabia, UAE, and Korea. And there was thirty five percent of the reported cases or the patients who were died. Exactly like SARS and COVID nineteen, it is also spread due to the close contact, sneeze and cough, etc. And the symptoms are exactly the same: fever, cough, shortness and breath, etc. And it is also more severe in the old people because they have weakened immune system. There is no vaccine for the for treating this, and there is no specific treatment. But there are some recommendations that we can follow. We should. practice more hygiene we should more often wash our hands and make sure that when you touch animals you should wash your hand after that because these this uh, virus is a zoonotic virus so it is coming from the animals so you must wash your hands after touching animals next is hepatitis hepatitis is inflammation of liver it causes pneumonia and many other uh, diseases but there was a outbreak of the hepatitis a in 2017 and 2018 the virus which is causing hepatitis is hepatitis virus and it is present in the contaminated food and water so if you ingest contaminated food and water you can contract to the hepatitis but the one things that have been studied that most people who once get the hepatitis virus they recover with the long life immunity after that only a small portion of the people die and they are those who have fulminant hepatitis fulminant hepatitis is a type of hepatitis in which your liver affects very quickly so it causes rapid death of a person the hepatitis has been common in the outbreaks among msm and pw ids ms men msm are men who sex with men 
and PWIDs are the persons who intake or inject drugs. So it is most common in the people, in this in in these people and also the people who are homeless. But it can get vac, but they can get vaccinated, and the incubation period for the hepatitis virus is fourteen to twenty eight days. Symptoms and treatment. The symptoms ranges from mild to severe. Fever, malaise, and loss of appetite can be seen. There is no specific treatment, as is it, as it is an inflammation of liver. So you must avoid unnecessary medication, and not that you must should not be given acetaminophen to the patient who is having hepatitis. Zika virus. Zika virus is not so serious virus. It was first discovered in 1947, and the first human cases that were detected were in 1952, when there was an outbreak of Zika virus in the tropical Africa, Southeast, Southeast Asia, and Pacific Islands. The outbreak of Zika virus is all has also occurred in July 2016 in United States. The reason or the cause of it was the spread of uh, of Zika virus by the daytime active Aedes mosquito. the incubation period of that virus is also is 2 to 14 days luckily 80% people are asymptomatic and the 20% just have mild fever rash joint pain conjunctivitis and muscle pain and abdominal pain so it is uh, it has some kind of similarity with the dengue virus there is no specific treatment but the person can take plenty of rest plenty of fluid intake and also they should take more and more panadol without the recommendation of doctor it would help in treating zika virus now the one of the most recent virus that have been globally pandemic is corona virus outbreak corona virus is newly discovered virus it was first outbreak in the wuhan china in december 2019 and then it become pandemic it spread all the continents but except antarctica corona virus or covid-19 causing million of death and the most common example of corona virus are sars and mers they are also a common example of corona virus they these two are also a respiratory illness like covid-19 covid-19 is spreading due to the close contact cough sneeze travel touch we know the symptoms of corona virus like you have fever headache loss of smell and taste pain fatigue difficulty in breathing there is no treatment for corona virus right now that um, the um, the vaccination for the corona virus is in development but there are several vaccines that have been developed by the pfizer moderna and johnson and johnson johnson but there are some recommendations that you all must follow to avoid corona viruses avoid handshakes cover your mouth and nose and keep 6 uh, feet distance from the other person that is how you can prevent yourself from corona virus now the last is lassa it was discovered in 1969 and it was named after the town of nigeria nigeria the estimated cases that are reported annually are 1 lakh to 3 lakh of this and approximately 5000 deaths occur it also it uh, transmitted from one person to another through the contact with contaminated excreta of the rodent mastomis uh, natalensis it is one person fatal yeah it means that it doesn't cause much deaths the incubation period for the uh, for the virus which is causing is 2 to 21 days in this you have bleeding gums eyes and nose difficulty in breathing cough swollen airways vomiting and diarrhea but with blood tremors and encephalitis there is a drug antiviral drug ribavirin which can be used which uh, which is used to treat this fever and it is most effective drug that has been designed yet so that's it Thank you.